guess I should unmute myself. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to another live stream here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a landscape image. Now, as always, if you want to pick up a copy of On One Photo Raw 2024 or anything else over on the On One website, consider using my coupon code Free Will Photos 20. It'll save you a little bit of money at checkout, and I make a small commission every time you guys use it, and I greatly appreciate it. Now, the photo that we're going to be editing today, we're going to start off by just processing it into an HDR. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at that. So here we are inside of the computer. And actually, before I jump into this particular uh, HDR edit, I just want to go over a quick tip if you will or a question and that's going to be like a new segment for the live streams is just one quick tip every time and maybe they won't be there every time but i got one today so the question that i received in comments it is how do you change the size of the film strip previews now i'm going to go ahead and change the view to just the screen only so we can look at this and then i'll be back so here, oh, don't want to look at that screen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close down this pane over here on the left. So that way I get a little bit more real estate in my overall image or on my overall screen. And you can see I have three uh, photos down here at the bottom. Now, if you don't know how to get to the film strip, if you click on this little drop down arrow, you get some options where you could choose either details, film strip, compare or the map view all right the two that i think most people will use is going to be the film strip and the details uh, and then if you really really want to compare some photos then uh, you'll use the compare but the question is how do i make these larger and this comes in handy when you are working on a smaller monitor or maybe some shape or form you're just not seeing them as large as you would like to it's actually very simple if you hover your mouse over the little uh, where the film strip is and where the text is, your cursor or your mouse will turn into this little double arrow with a rectangle in the middle. Hopefully that's coming through well on the screen. And all you have to do is click and drag up to make them larger. And my screen's going to uh, blank out a little bit, but that's okay. So you click and drag up to make them larger and you click and drag down to make them smaller. Now, the downside to doing it this way is you do lose some real estate up here in your main window or your main canvas pane. But if you are just doing it temporarily to kind of browse through and find the image you're looking for, this is how you can resize them. Now, I'm personally going to bring these back down, and I like them about this big on my monitor. It's not too small, and I can work with that. So hopefully that quick tip there uh, was of value. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual edit for today. Now, I have three photos here, and if you're not familiar, a high dynamic range image, or HDR is what it's called, if you're not familiar, it essentially allows you to take three exposures or multiple exposures, I won't just say three, and combine them into one. Now, this is a series of three photos that I took all at once with my camera, and I wanna merge them into a single image. The reason you would do this is on days like this where the sun is really, really bright. It was coming over here from the left, and it really, it you know, this this is uh, not the underexposed. This is probably the properly exposed one looking at the three images. This is what my camera wanted to actually capture. And if I go to the overexposed one, you can see there's some more details that are happening down in here. Now, Traditionally, you could go ahead and uh, expose those using a local adjustment. But today, I want to show you how you can kind of bring out that detail using an HDR. Now, 
For those of you who are familiar with H.E.R., I know it has a bad rap, and sometimes uh, every time I mention the word H.D.R., some people probably cringe, but look, there's ways of doing H.D.R. without making it cringeworthy, and hopefully that's something that we're going to look at today. So with that being said, I'm going to select all three of these photos because On One Photo Raw actually allows us to create an HDR image. Now, by default, it is probably hidden from you, all right? So if I click on my right bumper panel here, that's not gonna unhide it. In former versions of On One, it used to be over here on the right panel. Instead, what I'm gonna have to do is come up here to view, and then I'm gonna have to go to show, where is that thing? I'm sorry, it's under window. And then show uh, browser panel, I think it was. Nope, it's not that one. Because I don't know what that did. It's show right bumper, but I'm going to unhide the browser panel one. And we're going to go with show right bumper. Sorry, it's early in the morning. I am still sipping on my coffee. I haven't fully... Uh, woken up yet apparently but it's okay so now that i have the right panel over here i can go ahead and click hdr another option that you have with the new version of on one is you can click more and then hdr is going to be right here merge to hdr and then the last way of getting to this is by right clicking and then create hdr so three different ways of getting to it if you don't want to have these panels open just know that you can still get to the hdr option i'm going to go ahead and click this one and this is going to cycle through for a little while and then on one spits out this image of the merged images now i intentionally did something uh, to my underexposed image that i probably shouldn't have done and I wanted to do that to kind of show what you would get when you start merging images. Now, there's something known as ghosting. And ghosting, it means that something moved in your image just a little bit. And the photo editing software can do a pretty decent job at correcting some of that when it goes to align all of those images. So that way they're stacked right on top of each other. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. And this is where my tip comes in. Usually, at least in the way that I set up my camera for bracketing, and that's a whole nother discussion. If you got questions about that, leave it in the comment section. But usually, I'm going to go ahead and pull this over so that way you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, usually, the darker image, at least, again, the way that I set up my camera, uh, it comes out a little bit over baked if you will so i usually only use the medium exposure and the brightest exposure and you'll see why here in a little bit but if i click over here on this image and i'm going to click the little exposure item uh, this is my darkest image and let me see if i can just uncheck these and nope that's not going to resolve that issue. I'll have to show you afterwards. So we'll just get through the actual merging. Um, I'm not going to use the underexposed one. I'm actually going to use this one here. And I just need to uncheck some stuff. You'll see some uh, numbers jumping around over here. So the 0, 0.0 exposure, that's what we're telling on one. This is the, the most even exposure. This is what zero uh, exposure should be. And I'm trying to uncheck this, but it's not letting me uncheck it. There we go. Uh, and then you have negative one and you have plus one. That means it's one exposure under and one uh, exposure over. Hey, Mark, welcome to the stream, and no worries. So that's what the uh, the exposure really means here, right? One under, one over, and then you got even. Well, I 
personally use the two here, right? Uh, the even and the over. And there's some better ways of making HDRs. I'm just going to roll with this one for today. I'm trying to, un I don't know why that one keeps getting checked. I don't want the negative one. I uh, don't want to spend too much time on this because this isn't really where the editing happens. All right. Uh, but if you happen to run into some ghosting issues, you can change the uh, level of the ghosting. I was on a tripod. There wasn't much moving or movement, I should say. So I should be able to just turn this off because it also wasn't a windy day. Uh, but, you know, there's naturally some wind that there was a little spider crawling up on my. Sorry if that uh, echoed into the microphone. There's a spider crawling on my XLR cable and didn't want that to get onto the actual mic here. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm so distracted this morning. It's great. So with that being said, uh, I turned off the ghosting and usually you, you would get a preview here. And I guess I didn't get the preview because I didn't have show ghosting. So let me go ahead and hit medium. And yeah, I don't think I had anything. You can see these uh, red spots here. And maybe that's actually appropriate because wherever those red spots are, let me zoom in. Wherever those red spots are, that means that you had ghosting that was going on in your image. So maybe that's where we should be. I'm going to go ahead and leave that be. We can turn that off because I think medium is most appropriate. And I'm not overly concerned about all of this. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out once we get into editing. And then you have a default look. I leave this on natural and there's a reason. Uh, or And the reason for that is because I can edit this later down the line because what this is in reference to is actually this item over here, which is the HDR look. We are going to have access to all of these adjustments in the develop module. So I'm not overly concerned about this or the editing uh, panel. So I'm just going to go with what I got here and we're going to get into editing this image. I'll hit save. And on one is going to merge just the two images that I have the check marks on, the even exposure and then the plus one exposure. It's going to send that over into the editing window. And while it does that, I'm going to get some coffee so I can wake up. It's coming along. It is coming along. All right, we'll let on one analyze the image. Good. There we go. All right, so now we can edit the file. Uh, and I don't need the film strip anymore because I have the file that I'm going to work with. I'm going to go ahead and turn this back to detail. So that way I get more real estate. And today I don't really need this pane over here, but I guess that's keeping the photo more centered to the right. So we'll leave it there for now. Okay. I'll just pull this over like so. All right. So. The very first thing that I want to do is figure out what my tonal range is in the image. And by holding the J key, I shouldn't have anything blown out, which it doesn't look like I do. Just to turn on the clipping indicators, apparently I do, and the J key has failed me. But that's okay. Uh, so I want to fix that because the whole purpose of using a HDR image is to not have things blown out um, and to be able to recover detail in certain areas. And that's like one of the main purposes of creating a high dynamic range image. So you can really manipulate some things. So what I'm going to do is come into tone and color. I'm not going to use brilliance AI. I know I probably should. I do say that that's a great place to start. I'm not going to use it though. I'm going to pull down on the highlights and 
I'm just going to pull down on it pretty good. And then I'm going to pull up on my shadows. And that seems to be okay. I don't like what's happening in the grass here. And so I may not even want to process this as an HDR. We might do something completely different. And I think we will because I don't like this. And look, that's just the way it is sometimes. You, you start doing something, you think it's going to work the way that you expect it to, and it doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and close that one out. But what I am going to do is edit this image right here. This is the probably the overexposed one. Uh, well, no, exposure value is zero. So I'm going to go with the underexposed one. It's a lot better to work with the underexposed versions of an image, uh, or at least a darker image when you want to do something like uh, processing HDR. And I don't know what's going on with the grass down here, because that is not how the grass looked on the day. And something's happening with the, uh, the processing into on one. So disregard the grass, but I'm going to go ahead and pull down on my highlights. And in fact, now that I'm working with a single photo, let's see what Brilliance AI does. So let's go ahead and click that, turn that on and see what it does. Sorry, we keep jumping around, but this is just the way uh, live streams go, at least with me. I'm a very fluid person when it comes to editing photos, uh, which I think many of you could probably relate to. Things don't always work out the way you expect them to when you start editing, and then you got to pivot. So Bruins AI is now turned on, and let me see. Yeah, it's at 70% because that's where I'm finding that I like Bruins AI to kind of work. And then I'll pull down on the color amount. Uh, actually, I kind of like what it's doing with the color, but I don't want to lose that warm uh, directional light. So I'll pull it down to 10, and I think we'll go from there. And then we'll come over here to tone and color. Let's see if a camera profile will help us with any of this, which I don't think it will. Uh, yeah, I don't think a camera profile is going to work or help us out. Uh, so we'll leave that on, on one standard and let's go ahead and pull down on the exposure because I think it helps to make this a little bit darker and then maybe we'll pull up on some of the shadows here. Yeah. Mark says things frequently act up on him too. Yeah, it, it happens. It's just the way things go. And then I'll pull down on my blacks. I'm not worried about crushing the blacks in my image. I do have my indicators on, which I just do that by clicking these little arrows up here. So where you see the blue overlays right here on my screen, that's saying that that is pure black. There's no detail there. And I'm okay with that because like, who's looking for detail in these areas over here and in this tree and in this grass? Nobody. I, I mean, I'm not. And I wouldn't expect the viewer to because part of the whole photography aspect is we direct the viewer's eye. So I'm okay with that. I'm not going to worry about structure. I will mess with haze. Uh, I think I may want to pull it down just a touch. Um, yeah, maybe I'll pull it down. Okay. So I think that that works. Now it's time to jump into the actual effects. I'm going to come back to modifying the light with local adjustments probably a little bit later, but the whole idea of today's tutorial was to kind of walk you through some of the HDR stuff. So one of the cool things about On One is you can take a single photo and you can drop the HDR look filter onto an individual photo. Now this looks very, very bad. So let's uh, figure out how we can make this look better. And you know what, let's just reset this. And I don't wanna put detail. In fact, I may wanna pull detail back just a bit because I feel like it was just too crunchy. And I want this to be a well-focused image but I also want it to be, um, what's the word, more smooth and chill. 
It's probably not the best way of describing what I'm going for, but that is what I'm going for. Uh, and now I can work with highlights and shadows, which is kind of the reason why most people use HDR. Let's see here. Pull down on the shadows. Most people want to go the opposite direction. When I work with my HDRs, I like to increase highlights and increase shadows because that helps build that contrast. And I like separation in my images, uh, which I'm going to have to come over here and modify my whites because in my histogram, I don't have a full dynamic range. That doesn't always mean that it's bad or good or anything. It just means that I may have to modify those. So uh, I'll probably do that with a curves adjustment. But I'm going to go ahead and pull up on the vibrance to bring back some of that sunlight. So let's fix this issue that we're seeing over here. And I'm going to do that by opening a curves adjustment. And I'm just going to pull this upper node to the left. And what that does is it increases the whites in your image. And if I pull it to the right, it'll decrease it. If I pull it down, it'll bring more blacks into the image until you got a pure black image. And this is really just the luminance, all right? Or the uh, the brightness of your image, so to speak. So I'm gonna pull that over. Looks like I lost my histogram. There we go. All right, so I think that gets me where I wanna go. Let's take a look at where we started. And here is where we are. Now it's time to really stylize this image because I think we got the tone working uh, fairly decent. It can use some more work, but that I think this, I just chose a bad image to uh, try and edit, so my bad. But whatevs, this is how it goes, all right? I'm a real person, and this is how real photo editing goes. I'm not perfect. With that being said, let's go ahead and throw a sunshine filter in here. And... The cool thing about the sunshine filter, it's probably way too much. So we'll just pull this down and I'm just going for that warmer tone. There's a few different ways to get this warm tone over the image. And I'm just messing around with the warm slider to see if I like what that's doing in any direction. Uh, maybe pulling this area down. Maybe pull the amount down as well. Let's turn this off and turn it on. It's barely doing anything, which I think is probably okay. We'll throw a little bit of glow in here, see what happens. Nope, not feeling the glow either. So what we'll do is we'll come back to develop because I think that maybe the photo is still just a little too bright for uh, the overall goodness of what we're trying to accomplish, or at least what I think I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm going to pull down on my exposure. And this should give me an opportunity to come back over here to my HDR and maybe open up those shadows just a little bit. And the goal that I'm going for here is like early morning where the sun is just peeking out over the uh, tree line here, which is exactly what was happening this morning. And I'm just trying to get this photo to get back to that look. And it was a very, like this whole field was glowing, but there was a lot of shadows as you can imagine with the sun still being just barely above the tree line here, shining down. Uh, there was a lot of shadow in this area um, you know, this area right here, and it just looked really cool. So that's why I snapped the photo. I'm just trying to bring that back. That's all I'm trying to do. And so I think this might be working out pretty good. What we'll do, we'll add a photo filter. So let's go photo filter. We'll click in here. I'm just going to click a warmer tone like that. And I think I'll put it everywhere except for in the sky. Maybe. Let's see here. 
Yeah, maybe we'll put it everywhere except for in the sky. So click on mask and then mask sky. This is either going to apply the mask to the sky or it's going to remove this uh, particular filter from the sky. I can't remember which one it does because I don't really do this particular technique that often. However, it looks like it took it away from uh, the sky and added it only in the foreground area here. Now, we should be able to turn this off and turn it on. And I like what it's doing. It is a little strong, so maybe we'll do something like that. And what I like to do whenever I add color is change my blend mode. So I'm going to click the gear icon just to make sure that this properties pane that I'm working on over here to the left is actually impacting this image. And under blending, I'm just going to select color which is just a blend mode and it allows me to only apply this color photo filter effect to the color of the image. Now, the next step that I want to do is really start to work with the colors and I'm still deciding if I want to replace the sky or leave the sky alone. I don't do many sky replacements, so maybe we'll have some fun and replace the sky in one of our uh, snapshots. So in fact, I think this is a good spot to add a snapshot. So we'll just call this base look. Okay. So now that we have that snapshot, I don't feel bad if I mess something up even further. Uh, and now it's time to just kind of explore and have fun with making a photo look the way that you know you would be happy uh, for it to look when it's all said and done so the next thing that I want to do here is probably throw in a color enhancer and I'm just gonna use the eye picker tool let me see I'll minimize snapshots so we get this higher up I'm gonna use the eye picker tool here and we'll go with hue we'll start with hue and I'll just grab that and we'll click somewhere in here and this is giving us those yellows uh, and I just want to make this grass a little bit greener just a little bit yeah I think that'll be because this was taken in October and the grass was a little bit more yellow however it wasn't like crazy yellow so I don't want to under sell how that looked and I think that that is probably appropriate maybe push the temperature just a little bit and if I brighten it hmm, I don't know I think I like brightening it and then we'll go with the greens and maybe saturate those but it doesn't seem to be grabbing much in the way of greens uh, here. So we'll leave that be. And then maybe we'll throw some vibrance on. And this is all subjective. Yeah, I think vibrance really does help with making the image pop just a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and uh, come back to snapshots. There we go. And then we'll call this look one. And this is what I love about working in on one. I can create a bunch of different looks and then kind of jump between them to see which one I actually like. Uh, I do wish that they would allow us to export. Like if I put five different looks in here, that when I go to the export window, I can just say export snapshots on a, any given photo. Uh, and then that's what gets exported. So hopefully we get to see that sometime in the future because that would be extremely helpful for me to be able to export all of the snapshots that I create because I do make quite a few uh, when I'm testing stuff out. But now we're going to have some fun and go to sky replacement. Hopefully this goes a little bit faster since we already used the mask sky option. Uh, hit the letter O. This is what it's doing. This sky was actually a pretty good subject for it to uh, figure out the mask. We may have to work a little bit on that tree line um, as I'm looking at the gradient between this is going to get the full sky adjustment. 
This area over here is kind of gray and it may not blend as well, but we'll see. We will see. So I am going to click on sky. We'll click over here and you may not have as many sky adjustments as I do uh, because I do have some packs that I've downloaded from on one, um, mostly these Ocudrone. Uh, I was hoping that there were some summer sky, or I'm sorry, not summer skies, sunrise, uh, which it looks like tropical sunrise, but that doesn't fit. So let's see because this obviously is not a tropical area. If you're in a tropical area, this might work for you. But for me, I need something that fits with the direction of light coming. Like I, I could flip this, uh, but there's no blue tones in the image and I'm not a fan of making things overly fake. This could work. Let me try something. So with sky replacements, uh, sometimes, like the sun is right here. Obviously, I need to move it over there. So I'm going to go to position. And I wonder if I can shift. So doesn't look like it wants to let me move the actual photo and that's kind of the the challenge that you face with these uh, but I have another way of doing this um, you lose some of the cool features you lose some of the cool features but again this is why I do things live so that is in the Ocudrone Sunrise, and what number was that? Uh-oh. Number six. All right. I need to know where I'm getting it from, so I'm going to turn that off for a second. We'll come over. Uh, does matter. I need to click Layers. And we're just going to go ahead and hit this plus icon. And what I'm going to do is add this as its own layer. There is a folder I was working in, uh, but this should be under my extras, maybe. So it's, it's either my extras or uh, on one extras, but depending on, because I think these are the skies that I, yeah. So I need to go back to on one extras and then we'll go with skies and tropical sunrise and then I just need number six which is this one and we'll add as a layer now this is a really cool way of making sky replacements uh, when you just don't have other options or when the sky replacement tool isn't working uh, the way that you would prefer to work with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this down. Uh, let's turn off our top layer for a second. Hit the V key so I can move this particular layer. Why is it not moving? Because I don't have that layer selected, that's why. So let's go ahead and hit the V key again. Now I have this layer selected. We can move it all the way up here to the top left. I'm gonna drag this out so that way it is covering our canvas. And it doesn't look like, cause I'm gonna have to really scale this up. just to get this to fit. So maybe this isn't going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. Maybe I can do something like this. We'll go with something like that. We'll see what happens. 
All right, so now we'll go ahead and turn on our other image. Just need to refit that to where it's supposed to be. We'll come over to this image and I'm gonna click on the mask icon and I'm going to go mask and then mask sky because all I wanna do is punch a hole through this top layer so the bottom layer can show through. This is basic layer editing and you know, the downside to this is you do lose the blending capabilities and that does not look very pleasant. <laughs> Let me go back over here, hit the V key, should be moving this image. It looks like it just reset the image almost. Yeah. Oh, why are you being so difficult on one? Maybe, maybe I did actually reset it because I clicked the reset button there. I thought I was on the other layer and this is just the challenge of trying to do stuff that you would typically do in Photoshop inside of on one. And it is what it is though. But at least we now have our layer cut out. And I'm just trying to, and I don't think this is actually going to look as good or look good at all. So I feel like I'm just like botching all of this. But, you know, hey, this is this is the way that real photo editing happens. You got to try and solve problems. And I don't know if I'm solving this problem at all. So that's one of the benefits of being able to just right click on something and hit delete layer. Come over here hit reset on this mask and then click the image hit the V key and reset this to fit inside of the window and we're back to where we started non-destructively not a problem and I can go maybe with a different sky so I don't like this sky and I really don't like replacing the skies. So instead of trying to replace the sky, let's just see what we could do with the actual sky that we have here. So let's go to local adjustment. And I'm going to hit the letter M to give a masking bug. We'll click right here, rotate this around. And I'm just going to see if I can darken the sky down, but keep it rich. So maybe something like that. We'll drag this out so it kind of blends a little bit better. And a minus one exposure doesn't bother me as much, but I need the sky to be just a little bit more blue. So maybe we'll do a temperature adjustment. Let me scroll this down so you can see. And I'm grabbing the temperature slider here. And then I'll just kind of pull this in, see how that works. Let's get the brush tool. Yeah, I kind of like what it's doing there. Maybe it needs to blend a little bit more gradually. So let's go back to our masking bug, pull this down. Maybe something like so. And I kind of like what I'm getting here. Um, I feel like maybe we can enhance some of this. Uh, I don't know if this is orange, pink, whatever, uh, magenta. Well, maybe we can enhance some of that. So let's try doing that. And I'm trying to think of which tool I want to use to do that. You know, we'll try a technique that we'll see if it works. Uh, and essentially, it's a burnt or a dodge effect uh, by sampling the color. So we'll sample this area. And now I have that into my paint with color section here. 
And then what I'm going to do is click on the gear icon and come over to my blend mode and change it to soft light. And then I'm going to pull down on my opacity quite a bit because I want to build this up over time. And essentially what I'm going to do is paint with this color on this layer and we'll see what happens. And yeah, I may have made my opacity way too low, but that's okay. And all I'm going to do is just paint this over. You'll probably start to see it grow in intensity here in a little bit. But I'm just kind of starting over here every time and then coming out just a little bit further with it uh, because I want that, I want to make the illusion that this pink magenta tone is kind of coming down across the image. I know you can barely see my hand movement there, but, um, and you know, this is just one of those subject, subjective artistic methods of working. Uh, you do not have to do this. I mean, you don't have to do anything I, I do. This is just me kind of having fun with the edit now. And so that is a method. If I turn this off and on, you'll see that that area just kind of grew a little bit in intensity. It's a fairly subtle adjustment, but it kind of helps with the uh, the blue adjustment to the sky that I made or the temperature adjustment I made to the sky. And in fact, we might even be able to come in here. I wonder if I change this to classic. No, classic doesn't want to work. Or actually, maybe classic will work. This is just set to uh, an exposure adjustment. Maybe soft light doesn't work for this one. Nah. So I like to use it soft light or leave it at soft light and then just leave it on normal or solid paint, I should say. Uh, I like the adjustment that I'm getting there versus the other ones. So we'll work with that. Uh, and then we might do something similar to that here on the ground. So let's do add adjustment and I will go paint, paint with color, grab my eye picker tool, click somewhere around here. That's the color that we're going to sample. Come over to my blending, change this to soft light and then I'll increase the opacity on this one uh, because I think it'll work. Mark says he likes this one better too. Yeah, you know, I'm just having fun. This is this is how I edit photos. Uh, I sit around and I just try stuff out. So I'm just going to go ahead. Well, that's darkening. I want something brighter. Let me change my color. So... One of the cool things about this technique is if it if it gets too dark, I could just open up the color and make a brighter color. And now I'm painting a brighter color because I want to dodge in this area, which just means I'm brightening this area. Uh, and then I'll probably go and burn the shadow areas. And I don't need to do a whole lot of work here. I just want to help enhance this and you know dodging and burning with colors is one of those techniques that very few people use but when you when you do it well and you know I'm not a landscape photographer I just happened to be up on a hike one morning and I had my camera and I said wow look at this I want to take a photo and so that's what I did now I feel like yeah, let's see what that's done so far, because I may need to change the color. 
Uh, okay, so it's kind of brightened up the area. It's not as as strong as I would care for it to be, but you know, it, it's definitely making a difference. Because if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see the difference that it's making. I think that's coming through. It's kind of like just a kiss of yellowish light. And if I wanted to change maybe the hue, just a slight bit towards orange now you know it kind of looks a little bit more uh, impactful so the next thing I'll probably hit these uh, little bushes over here but being very careful to stay away from the darker areas so we'll hit add adjustment and we'll go back to paint with color Hit the color picker tool, select a color, and I need to click here so that way I'm getting my color swatches the way that I want. Um, the color picker tool, yeah, the point color here, and I agree. Uh, I'm trying to show how we could probably get something similar uh, using on one. Um, but yeah, the point color tool would be amazing at this, at this point or for this, I should say. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and paint this over and that might be too bright, too much and not in the areas that I actually wanted that to go. So let's see if we can go blending and pull this away from shadows maybe pull it away from skin tones which should only leave us with the brightest areas getting this adjustment in there but now that just looks all hazy and muddy like if I turn this adjustment off and on you can see it's not really helping the the cause over there so maybe this one just needs a uh, dodge adjustment that is not a paint with color so maybe we'll just go highlights and maybe we'll increase the temperature just a touch and so now and that's actually already painted on there so let's turn this off and on and see what happened yeah that's way more natural it's very subtle so i'm just going to pull up on the highlights even more and pull up on the exposure We'll pull back. Yeah, there we go. Now it's starting to really shine through just a little bit better. So now if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see the adjustment that is being made. And this is very subjective. I'm just trying to enhance that or give the illusion. I don't know if that's the best way, but I want to show that this sunlight is hitting this area coming down into here uh, which those areas should be brighter that's all that I'm trying to do here I might even and I'll command Z that and then I'll make the opacity even lower here and I'm just gonna grab like lightly paint over this area uh, the goal is not for anyone to know that something was modified in the image, it should all look natural. That's the way that uh, I personally think it should be. We'll hit this little area back here as well. So now that I've done my dodging adjustments, I can do my burning adjustments. So we'll hit add adjustment again, and this time I'm okay with negative exposure. We're just gonna come into the shadow areas and I'll pull up my opacity. This can be like when it comes to burning, I like to burn a lot more than I dodge. Uh, that's just a personal preference. So, and I also don't like to burn every single shadow, uh, which is why you see me resizing my brush and I'm just clicking in different areas. Uh, because to me, that makes more dynamic light in the overall image. So that's why I only burn uh, in 
certain areas. So like this area, I would probably burn just because it's immediately opposite of this particular bright area. So I would burn this a little bit more. Then I would probably burn this because that doesn't need as much uh, burn work. Might come over here and get these little areas uh, because if I can make things a little bit darker, that makes the things in the image that much more bright or perceivably more bright. And that's the whole power of dodging and burning is you are developing the perception of the viewer and really telling the viewer where they should look. Uh, the focal point here was really the light because I was drawn by the light that was coming out over these trees. And so I need to find a way of showcasing that. And that's why I'm going through and I'm burning areas and hopefully making that light stand out a little bit better. But I do it in a very, or I hope I do it in a subtle way. And I'll even burn some of these darker spots that are here in the foreground that just may help with telling the overall story. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, again, very subtle, but not uh, over the top. And I could probably come back here and get into these trees And that could help with telling the story as well. I could also do this with a radial gradient if I really wanted to. And, you know, that starts to put some depth in the back of these trees or in the trees in the background. Uh, just with those few clicks, there's a little bit more depth back there. Maybe hit this tree up right here. Let's do something like that. Yeah. So this is what we came into on one with. Uh, not the greatest photo. Probably wouldn't, you know, get much attention. But then this is what we ended up with uh, when it was all said and done. I think I could do way more to this because, you know, you could really spend time and craft an image to your heart's content. And I would probably end up spending a little bit more time on this, um, maybe even adding more color to the overall image just because I want to increase that. But my hope here is that you see the different opportunities that are available to you inside of All One Photo Raw and, you know, this is a very dynamic uh, or diverse editor. It's not just for landscapes. Uh, what the techniques minus the sky replacement, the techniques that I was using today can be used on any image. And in fact, in December, I'm going to go through a plethora of editing photos or photos of different genres from macro to street to food to product to you name it, uh, I'm going to try and have a lot in there. I am working on getting some astro photos uh, and maybe even some drone shots. So that way you can see what you can do inside of On One Photo Raw and go a little bit more beyond just the three things that we typically see, which are, are really the two main things, which are portrait and landscape. Uh, that seems to be the primary things that people showcase on YouTube. And I want to kind of take that in a different uh, direction. So if there is a genre of photography that you would like to see edited inside of On One to see if it's even possible or what could happen, then please shoot me a comment uh, either on my website through the contact form down in the comment section of this particular video, or you can email me at freewillphotos at gmail.com and I'll be able to respond to you and give you a, or at least let you know if I can do something like that or not. Um, so 
Yeah, I hope you guys found value in today's tutorial, and I do appreciate everyone who hung out with me as I went through, you know, iterations of trying to figure stuff out. Um, but hopefully there was still some value for everyone involved. And so next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.